voices shall continually be in my mouth No matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Father have your way in this place You be glorified in it all Come on let's raise it together, say I will bless the Lord at all times And His praises and his shall continue leaving No matter what I no see, no matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing As long as I'm breathing Oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing As long as I'm breathing Hey, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless Come on say, oh magnify Oh magnify the Lord that's the reason why we're here tonight. Let's lay down our cries. Nothing like an old school Bible. Amen. Come on, somebody. How many got an old school Bible? Wave it in there. Come on. There you go. Hallelujah. Nothing like a Bible. I like to hit the devil over the head with this one. Amen. Pop. Amen. Stop messing with my kids. Stop messing with my family. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, the, these things, these batteries run out, but how many know this never runs out? Amen. Amen. Matthew 22, you guys have it? Amen. This is, this is Jesus being asked the greatest commandment of ever. And he answered the disciples and he said, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Pray that you just have your way here this morning. Take control of our hearts and also our minds. Help us to focus on what you have for us here this morning. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Take control of this atmosphere. In Jesus' name, everybody says? I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them you're the coolest person in this room. Come on. You may be seated. You are the coolest person in this room, Caleb. I, we're trying to think cool. We're trying to think cool thoughts right now. Amen. Try to think cool thoughts. Trying to be cool. Amen. I want to welcome anybody that's visiting us this morning. Like, how many know? First time you're a visitor. After that, you become family. Amen. And hey, we're big on that faith and family. We want to create a good, godly family in our church, and we love you. Amen. And we want to see the best for you. Amen. We're always trying to make sure that we do things with excellence as much as possible and give our best foot forward. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're starting a new series, and it's called this. You're not the boss of me. Come on, somebody. You're not the boss of me. How many have ever said that to somebody? You're not, the, you're not my daddy. Hello, somebody. You're not my papa. You're not my daddy. But do you know in life we have a lot of situations where we let le things lead us? And we don't even know that it's leading us. But we say, you're not the boss of me. So I really want to get into different, different things about this subject. Because it's, I believe it needs to be heard this morning. I, I'm actually, I actually prayed over everything um, that I'm going to be speaking on. And uh, I have it here. So basically, every weekend, I'm going to be ministering on a certain topic. This one in particular... I'm going to be talking about the emotional, unstable Christian. Amen? But to, next week, I'll be talking about the fear, right? And I believe that can boss you around in life. And the, the next following one is how many here have ever gotten a meltdown? Come on, somebody. Not your makeup. Not your makeup. But you fell apart. Right? You fell apart. And a lot of times, anxiety will lead you and deplete you at the same time. And we're going to be speaking on these subjects, and I believe the Lord's going to move in a powerful way. I, I encourage you to keep inviting people because I know that one of the things that we pray for, we pray that people will get saved and blessed and, and also built up in the kingdom of God. Can somebody shout amen? amen? One of the things that I've asked God a lot of is just the grace. And I've asked God to help me in life and situations. I said, Lord, just give me grace. 
We can't prevent problems, but we can ask God's grace to help us through our problems, right? We're going to have problems. Every one of us are going to have issues with parents, families, brother, sister. We're going to have problems with the world, our job. Come on, somebody. Your car is going to break down the middle of the road. Your car is going to just give you problems when it's hot and it breaks down and your air conditioner goes out at the same time. How many know we're all going to have those kind of challenges? But I know that the grace of God is there to meet you right where you're at. And, uh, and the, the things that I have to yeah, we have to understand when it comes to serving the Lord, God wants us to be in a posture that says, okay, you got problems, but I, you might be asking me of things. How many of you here pray a lot for things? Lord, save my loved ones. Lord, give me finances. Lord, pay my bills. Lord, help me with my situation. But God also asks us something of us. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. He says, my son, God the Father to us, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Turn down the microphone just a little bit, guys. Caleb, turn down the microphone. There you go. These, these are the things that God is looking for, and he's looking at your heart. See, God might have your worship, but he doesn't have your heart. Caleb, can you guys turn it down a little bit? He might have your worship, but he doesn't have your heart. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, it says, And so the Lord says, These people say they are mine. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Isn't that true at times? How many have ever gone to church where you could be worshiping and thinking about something, something totally different? You're just, I, and I can always tell. I can always tell. Because you're worshiping like this. Because you're thinking about something else. And you, raise your hand. I know. And, and sometimes you're not even paying attention to what's being said, and you're just looking at everybody. And, and I know what's going on is that your mind is on something else. And you have to know that God wants your full attention. And do you know that this is how God gets your attention? This, you probably don't want to hear this, but this is how God gets your attention, through problems. Did you know that? Matter of fact, he'll teach you how to pray through a problem. Because if we have no problems, we have no prayer. So we, we, we get into a place where we don't, we don't pray because we don't have any problems. But I tell you, when God allows a problem to come into your life, he says, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Why? It's because God is trying to get your attention. He doesn't just want your worship. He wants your heart. Proverbs 4, verse 23, the Bible says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of, out of it springs the issues of life. How many here have issues? Some of y'all didn't raise your hand, I know. But you're like, I got issues. I got, I got problems. How many got anger issues? Don't raise your hand. It's okay. You're all mad already. Amen. Can I tell? You got jealousy. Come on. You, you suffer with anxiety. Ah. You suffer with all kinds of stuff. You're dealing with all, relational issues. How many can relate to relational issues? You don't get along with your siblings. There it is, right? You know, you get along with this half and not this half. You know, matter of fact, sometimes you have problems here in the church. You sit on this side, you don't get along with the person on that side. We have issues. Everybody say, we have issues. And I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them, I know you got issues. There it is. I know you got issues. We all got issues, but it doesn't stem from problems. It stems from our hearts. And that's what it says. Keep your heart. In other words, the word keep means to keep a garden. How many ever had a garden? Matter of fact, I woke up this morning and, and Crystal is with us, and she was smiling from ear to ear, and I, I go, what? praise the Lord. And she was all smiling, and, it, and then she goes, Pastor, look. And I look down, and I see a plant, beautiful flower, and it's, it's literally died because we don't know how to take care of a plant. Hello, somebody. The leaves were all brown. Everything was all, you know, looking, it looked like it's, it was death. But Crystal brought it back to life. And I go, wow, look how beautiful it is. It's because she kept it. She watered it. She took care of it. I go, did you speak to it? And she goes, yes, I've been speaking to it. All right, all right. That's why I thought you were talking to yourself this whole time. Amen. So she was talking to the flower. And I'm like, okay, praise the Lord. That's how it is with what we have inside. We don't take care of our hearts. And if you don't take care of your heart, issues will arise. Does that even make sense? 
Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. It will determine the trajectory of your life, or where you end up at. That means guarding. It, and, and I think what people have today is a misconception of guarding. So a guard doesn't necessarily stop people, but he watches people. And he lets the ones that are approved to come in and the ones that are not approved to stay out. So when somebody guards something, they're protecting something, but not letting it, not just stopping the flow. And sometimes we guard our heart from getting hurt. So we stop everybody from coming in. We can't get too close to people because they might what? Hurt us. But guarding represents watching what comes in and out. You don't let just anybody come into your life and it just mess you up. You guard that. But there's certain people that you let in and in certain circumstances that you let in. So that the Bible says guard your because when you don't when you don't do it the right way, you know what's going to happen is that we're always guarded. How many have ever heard that expressed? You don't let nobody love you. you you're, you're like careful. Remember what Jesus said. If somebody slaps you in the face, pa, turn the other cheek. Pa. Right? Doesn't the Bible say about that? Turn the other cheek. You know, somebody hits you, turn the other cheek. What happens when you run out of cheeks? Turn around. Amen. Hallelujah. There's two more. <laughs> I got to get you to laugh, guys. I, could, I, I messed up on the joke, but you're not here. I got to get you to laugh right now. You got four cheeks to mess up. Amen. <laughs> but how many know that? You know what it means? In the Greek, it means to make yourself vulnerable again. To do it all over again. I'm going to love again. Do you imagine a pastor that's guarded? I will never be able to let people in and, and bring them in even if they left. I have to love people going in and going out because I learned to guard. I didn't learn to block. And when you block, you don't let love come in as well as love go out. But when you guard, you control what's going in and what's going out. In other words, you still have a healthy heart. Can somebody say amen? But you know that, you know, people make decisions in their life. And have you ever heard this expression? Well, I feel in my heart that I need to do something. Do you ever, how many have ever said that? Yeah. I feel that in my heart that this is not right. I feel in my heart that I need to go and do this. And I hear that expression all the time. And I said, that's pretty dangerous. That's very dangerous. When somebody says that, I feel in my heart that, I, that this is that. And sometimes we're, we're willing to believe a lie and thinking it's the truth because you believe your heart more than anything else. Right? That's dangerous. Let me tell you what the Bible says about that. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who would know it? In other words, if you say, I'm just going to let my heart lead me, oh, you're in a dangerous place. You're like, ooh, I let my heart lead. Wait a minute. Your heart is deceitful. Your heart will lead you places you shouldn't go. You know the Bible says over a thousand times referring to your heart. The Bible refers to the heart as it refers to the mind and the emotions. It's a combination of both. Matter of fact, it's the center seat of your emotions, your heart is. Right? It is the center focus point. In the church, we find two types of people: broken hearts and broken spirits. A broken heart typically comes back or comes with a lack of understanding or in an in a inability to accept the reality of what is. In other words, you're stuck in pain. You can't get over it. You keep asking why. Those are broken people that come to church, they have broken hearts. But the broken spirit are merely emotions disappointed and regrets that derive from choices and decisions we've made. Sometimes people come to church, they realize they've made mistakes. How many of you ever made a mistake? Come on. And you're still living in your mistake right now. And we live in that arena of regret. That is a broken spirit. But I'm here to let you know 
God is able to heal a broken heart and a broken spirit in the house of the Lord. If you have come to this place, you have come to a good place. You have come to a place where God wants to heal your broken heart and heal your broken spirit. Because I believe that people feel things that are not true. Because you come from a broken spirit or a broken heart. I believe people will make determinations or decisions according to how they feel and they get it all wrong. I want to I want to speak to somebody that says that you've been running on feelings and you got to be careful because your feelings will run out on you often. Because how many ever felt good and felt bad at the same time? Felt good and said, oh, and then you get angry and mad and upset. If we're not careful, we'll be led by happiness and not by the truth of God. Do you know that the Declaration of Independence we're going to be celebrating on the 4th of July states this, it's the pursuit of happiness. And do you know the pursuit of happiness has been declared all over the United States that you should pursue happiness? But I'm here to let you know that not everybody's happy in the United States. There's some miserable people in our country. But they say pursue happiness, and I think they got it twisted. It's good to be happy, but if that's all you pursue in life, I'm here to let you know there's a rude awakening coming your way that you will not always be happy. Because the definition of happy is happening things around you, good things. But what happens when the bad things happen to you? What happens when it all goes bad? Are you no longer happy? Are you always sad and depressed? Do you have a dark cloud over your life leading you and showing you the way? Because you're looking for happiness and you can't find it in your emotions and so you're struggling with the fact that you're not happy. Can I, can I speak to somebody here today? What is the difference between joy and happiness? You see, happiness is an emotion. It's emotions that are naturally reacted to situations around us. But joy, I'm going to say joy, is the ability to be content believing that God is working all things out for the good. So God does not want you to pursue happiness. He wants you to pursue God and that the joy of the Lord will become your strength. Some people look to be happy all their life. You just want to be happy in your relationship. You just want to be happy with your children. You want to have a happy home. You want to be happy. Come on, somebody. But I'm here to let you know, God is not looking for happy people. He's looking for joyful people. And the joy of the Lord is the conviction that God is going to come through for everything that we're believing God for. So that means you could walk with God and say, oh, thank you, Jesus, because you start singing. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Come on. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Come on. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Come on. You start singing that song in the middle of your pain. You start singing that song in the middle when you lost your job. You start singing that song even when you're sick in body because... Life doesn't determine if you have joy. Jesus determines if we have joy. If you're looking for a paycheck to get you joy, you got the wrong source of joy. If you're looking for money and things and pleasure, those things bring temporary. But I'm here to introduce you to the Jesus that brings joy to a person's life and says, yes. It doesn't matter if I lost my job. It doesn't matter what I'm going through right now. I got the joy of the Lord, which is my strength in God. You see, you're led by emotions, and that's why we have Christian yo-yos in the house of God. The devil is just playing with you. Come on, somebody. I wish I had a yo-yo right now, and I could show you you in this yo-yo. You're doing good today, but next week, I don't know who you are or where you're going. Come on, somebody. We are the Christian yo-yos that God can't use as a testimony to the world today. Let me tell you, people are not looking to when you're doing the best. They're looking for when you're doing the worst and see how you handle life. Because if you're worse than them, you got nothing to offer them. Right? If you're all depressed because you're going through it, and I said. Oh, you just want to forget it. Just leave. And you start cussing, forget it. And then they're going to look at you and they're going to say, I don't want to serve that Jesus. 
That doesn't even make sense. Because that becomes an emotional believer. Your emotions become your boss in life. You, you, they, they lead you in every aspect of your life. And I get it. Sometimes we are emotional people. How many can admit that, hey, I got some emotions I'm trying to control here. Come on. Sometimes I feel a certain way. Hey, just I come into a room, I feel everybody's looking at me. Somebody's watching me. You're just, you're just like, oh, my God, I'm feeling so... Oh, he don't like me. You don't, oh, she don't. This church, I don't know if they're friendly. You tripping. You let your, your emotions lead you. Even in church, you're, wor- you're worried, you're thinking. And, and a lot of times we operate that way. And I tell you, you'll never be a true testimony of God if you operate through your emotions and be led by your emotions. And when your emotions is your boss. This generation today, can I speak about this generation today? This generation has a problem. They grew up saying, I feel all the time. Every time I I counsel a young man or woman, they always tell me, I've been feeling a certain way. That's my uh, tripping voice, amen. I've been feeling a certain, I've been feeling, I feel like I like him. I feel like, I'm I'm just using a crazy voice right now. I feel a certain way. And they always start their conversation with feeling. You always have to go by, I feel sad, so I stay sad. No. I feel this, so I say this. No. If you can get the word of God enough in your spirit, you have ammunition to fight your depression. You have ammunition to fight that thing that's causing you to feel sad. You have enough ammunition to say, God, devil, you're a liar. I'm not going to be deceived by your lies anymore. I'm not going to believe those lies that you tell me because the word of God is the truth and it will combat the lies of the enemy. Can you feel me here today? Come on. I want somebody to feel me here today because you're led by your emotions. Like right now, you're depressed. All depressed, you're led by your, you, the emotions are your boss. That's a terrible boss, amen. How many have ever gone to work and you have a boss and the boss has a great day and treats you good? Matter of fact, he treats you to lunch and he says, everybody, you get pizza today. Oh, it had to be on the day that you're fasting, isn't it? It was like, I'm fasting today, but all of a sudden we get treated out to lunch. But the next day, your boss just chews you out and tells you you're no good. Matter of fact, you're just close to getting fired. How do you know to go to work if it's going to be a good day or a bad day? You just don't know. That's how we live our lives because your boss is your emotions. Your emotions get you mad, and you stay mad all day. But when you're good, oh, yes, it's good. Oh, I just got paid. Let me take you out to lunch. Let's go, right? You're happy. But I'm telling you here today, when we search for happiness that way, you'll always find yourself empty. There was a story in Nehemiah, I love it, because Nehemiah was celebrating the walls being built. There was an incredible, incredible situation that nobody thought that they would be able to build the walls in a very short time. And when they finally built the walls, not only were they rebuilding the walls of the city, they restored the families in the city. That's what we tried to do here in Victory Outreach Concord. We're trying to rebuild the walls of this city, and we're trying to build the families of this city. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Nehemiah was at a point where he gathered the people, and he made this quote that we all quote all the time. And it says, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And because he said that, he said, because of God restoring our lives and restoring the walls that were depleted, and in other words, the walls of your life is everything that you were destroyed behind and whatever drug addiction that you may have, or the things that destroyed your life, God has rebuilt it. And now we can declare that God is good in a bad situation. Can somebody say amen? And do you know that, that your feelings can't be trusted? Did you know that? I, so, so there's a difference between feeling and intuition. Okay, so sometimes I have bad intuition. I don't discern things the way I should. So what do I do? I ask my wife. Amen. She has a better discernment than I do. And she'll catch up things real quick. She'll have that discernment spirit, and she'll catch, oh, there's something wrong about this situation. I go, there's nothing wrong with this situation. And more than likely, she was right. She has a discernment, but it's backed up with truth and the word of God. 
She always comes back to the Word of God and begins to pray and says, wait a minute, if this is something that we should be watching out for. That's something, that's, that's the difference. But true feelings can't be trusted. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. And I love this, and it says here, Do not be wise in your own eyes. The fear of the Lord and depart from evil. Do not be wise in your own eyes. I believe people are always trying to be wiser than everybody else just because you feel a certain way. We're a people of fast food and fast feelings. Can you hear an amen? We are emotional eaters. How many of you ever said, I feel like eating steak today? I feel like eating a hamburger. You know it was against your diet today, but you, your feelings are superseding your diet today. Yeah, you know, you were on a diet today, I'm going to be on a diet. But when the feelings came up, oh, I feel like eating a burrito. So you go straight to the taqueria. Hello, somebody. You order your super with extra guacamole and sour cream. Come on, somebody. You put that extra, extra, whatever you like, some chili, because you felt a certain way. We are emotional eaters. In the same way, we're fed by our vibe. Whatever you're been vibing in the area, the vibe will dictate how you feel. We eat the environment. But I want to help somebody get past that. Is that all right? I want to help you get past that. And if you're writing any notes, I want you to write this down. Trust, delight, and commit. Everybody say trust, delight, and commit. Do it again. Trust, delight, and commit. Somebody's falling asleep next to you, tell them, trust, delight, commit. Somebody said, trust, delight, and commit. I want you to get that in your spirit. Because the Bible says in Psalms 37, verse 5, or 37, verse 3 to 5, it says, trust, somebody say trust, in the Lord, and do good. Dwell in the land, and feed on what? His faithfulness. Right? We're not feeding on the world, but we're feeding on what God is able to do in a situation. Somebody say amen. We learn to trust God in the middle of a tough situation. Next one is delight. Everybody say delight. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And the word delight is to heavily involve in something. So when you get heavily involved in something, God does something in your life. And he says, because you're concerned about my things, I'll be concerned about your things. And somebody say amen. You take care of God's business, and God will take care of your business. Does that make sense to you? Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that good? And the, the third one is commit. Everybody say commit. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. A lot of times we give up prematurely. We give up quickly. And you know what it is? Is that we haven't given up our running shoes yet. You got your Nikes that you keep running with. Hello, somebody. You need to throw away those old shoes already and stay put. We run from relationships and we run from God. We run from everything. But the Bible says we need to commit. Everybody say commit. What that means is that you got to make a commitment that whatever hell or high water, I'm going to stay true. And it says here that if you do that, it will come to pass. How many here are praying for their loved ones to get saved? Come on. How many praying for a blessing? If you can wave both hands, if you're praying for a blessing, you're praying that God will provide and God will take care of you. How many here are praying for a million dollars? Come on, somebody. You're praying for something. Well, commit yourself to God. Just commit yourself. The Bible says in Matthew 6, verse 33, commit yourself to him and he'll add all things to you. Put him first and he will add all things to your life. The thing is that we're chasing things and the things will leave us. But if you chase God, the things will come to us. Can somebody say amen? And do you know, lastly, I'm going to have Caleb make his way up, is this. Is that we don't know how to rest and wait on the Lord. When we're in an emotional situation, we don't know how to rest and wait. Do you know that's a bad word for somebody that's emotional? When you're emotional, you want to do something about it, right? How many have ever got angry and you want to hit somebody right now? How many have ever said, 
I'm mad and I'll hit him tomorrow. Doesn't even make sense. I'll slap them tomorrow. Just, I'll get them tomorrow. No, no, no. If you're angry, if you're like some of us, come on, somebody, you want to get revenge, ahorita, right now, this minute, this second. You want to say what you want to say right now, right? We don't know what it means to rest, and we don't know what it means to wait because we want to handle things now. How many here are control freaks? All right, ooh, I got a room full of control freaks. I'm one of you guys, hallelujah, come on. I, I love to make sure I know the outcome. This is where I grew. I let God control the outcome. Started changing that in my life. Okay, okay, okay. I can't keep my hand on it. I gotta let it go, I gotta let it go. But when you learn to rest and you learn to wait on the Lord, listen up, that will stop your emotions. I love, I, I'm, in, I'm in real estate and the Lord is blessed. And I, I have these different clients. And I have ones that got some wisdom. And they're emotional sometimes because they get a good deal. They go, oh, this is a great deal. This is a great deal. And I thought he was going to say, let's do it now. Let's do it now. Let's go. Let's go. Break the contract. Let's go. And he goes, let me just wait. I said, what? Let's wait till tomorrow. Let me sleep on it. And I said, oh, that's a good one. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. And sometimes when you're led by your emotions, you want to say things now. You want to do things now. And you want to do it with a temporary feeling, making permanent decisions. Can somebody say amen? You make temporary, you get these temporary feelings of whatever you're feeling, and then you jump out and make a permanent decision. That doesn't even make sense. Emotions are your boss. When you don't know how to rest and wait. The Psalms 37 verse 7 says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Wait can somebody say amen? amen? You know why? Because the Bible says in Matthew 11, 29, take my yoke upon you. You know what that means? It's a yoke when they would uh, move a, uh, an ox and they would have a yoke over the, the ox and he would pull the weight and, and that weight on you, God says, I can handle that. So he says, give me your yoke and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls. The thing is, is that sometimes we look to go to a vacation to find rest. You look to go to sleep to find rest. Do you know most people that are in depression, they go to sleep a lot? Did you know that? Sleep is the antidote to depression, they say. But guess what, baby? You wake up depressed still. It's worse because you're all grumpy at the same time. You're dealing with the emotionals. And you're trying to sleep away your pain. And sleeping won't take it away. And that's why Jesus says, come on guys, this rest in the world is not like the rest in God. When you learn to rest in God, you learn to trust in God. You learn to commit to God. You learn to surrender to God so that I do His will, not my will. I'm not an emotional person that makes foolish decisions, but I wait for God to take control of the situations. He says, everybody say, wait! And you'll find rest. We'll find rest. Let me ask you this, a question. Who has your heart? Does anger have your heart? Does fear have your heart? Does anxiety have your heart? Does your emotions have your heart here today? Let God be the boss of your heart. Come on, somebody. The scripture I opened up with in Proverbs 23, verse 26 is, My son, give me your heart. And let your eyes observe my ways. I will take care of you this morning. And giving your heart, it's not just saying, God, I give you my heart. I give you my way of doing things. Listen, listen, listen. If I could just leave you with this. I give you the way I've been operating. I'm frustrated. I'm mad. I make decisions. I make mistakes. I make less mistakes when I learn to wait and rest on the Lord. And the way I rest on the Lord is I'll just spend time with God. Even this morning, my wife said, why did you get up so early? I got up at 5 o'clock this morning, and I wanted to pray an extra hour. So I was just praying. And she goes, she goes man, you prayed for a while. I said, yeah, because I wanted to rest in the Lord. I really wanted just to there and unload my anxious heart. How many know we, we get anxious every day? I get anxious, right? Some things are just out of your control. 
What anxiety is trying to control something out of your control. So we get anxious. And so I sat there this morning and I said, Lord, I give you my heart, my anxious heart. There's things that I'm praying for that are not happening yet. I'm believing God. I'm in the same boat as you guys. I'm no, long, I'm no different than you guys. But I learned to do this that kept me all these years. I learned to rest and wait on the Lord. I learned to commit. I learned to trust. When I do that, my emotions don't take control. But the Spirit of God leads me. The Bible says He orders the steps of the righteous. He'll order your steps. And it might not be through a door of convenience. It might not be the door of happiness, as we think, but it might be the necessary door that you need to get through so that God could do a work in your life deeper, better, and so that you can grow in God and you can keep the joy of the Lord. Can somebody say amen? I want you all to stand with me this morning. Praise the Lord. You're not the boss of me, the emotions. shall continually be in my mouth No matter what I see or how I feel As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord Father have your way in this place You be glorified in it all Come on let's raise it together, say I will bless the You leave me No matter what I see no what I see As long as I'm breathing Oh yes I'm breathing I'll bless the Lord As long as I'm breathing Hey Oh yes I'm breathing Come on say oh magnify Oh magnify the Lord with me Let us enjoy That's the reason why we're here tonight 